have you checked the children? Oh, 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 Bienvenidos, Freight fans. Welcome to the Horror Show. I am Jaime en Fuego, and this is going to be kind of a retro review for you here on the Horror Show. And this is for the very first season, which we never reviewed back in the day, because uh, we were very hesitant about the quality of programming on the Sci-Fi Channel. This is Channel Zero. Yes, so it was on the Sci-Fi Channel, Channel Zero, and this is the first season of that particular program, based on creepy pastas, and this is called Candle Cove. So the cool thing about these anthologies, it was very much, uh, it's unfortunately over now, it lasted four seasons, 2016, 17, 18, and 19. It was up for renewal, did not get it unfortunately, but it was very much like American Horror Story in the fact that each season was its own self-contained story, and Candle Cove is no exception, and it's also only six episodes. So it's a very kind of condensed self-contained story and one that you could probably easily binge and I mean if you really want to get ambitious like I did the night that I watched this recently in the midst of stay-at-homes and quarantines and all that craziness I watched this in the span of a night I started early I think I started at like eight nine o'clock something like that and I was up until relatively late in the evening that uh, you know uh, watching this the lady went to sleep and everything and I just stayed up and kept chugalugging along so I had actually tried the very first episode of this when it initially premiered and then while I was relatively intrigued it kind of fell by the wayside so uh, as we're trying to catch up on things that you know we were interested in and just didn't get around to with so much content to cover Candle Cove overall thoughts for me was incredibly effective i enjoyed i i like these sort of stories even though it borrows a lot from stephen king's it to a degree about the fact that there is a nasty incident that happens with a bunch of kids that die and then all these years later one of the surviving kids comes back and he's trying to investigate the situation because he's just he's being pulled back by some sort of force that he has trouble explaining and so um this is a show that reveals itself over time Russian doll status and this is where I'm not trying to spoil it because I want you guys to jump on Shudder which is where you can watch all four seasons currently of uh, Channel Zero so that I mean Shudder for the price $4.99 a month they are not sponsors of ours but we constantly champion their content whether original stuff that they acquire stuff they produce themselves like Joe Bob Briggs and Last Drive-In or whether it's just stuff that they bring on after the fact or for windows of time their stuff is great and so you can watch all four seasons right now including this first season and uh yeah so surviving kid goes back he's all grown up now and uh, he's kind of a child therapist and the show essentially starts with a very startling scene with him on a talk show and he's basically talking about this book that he has written and a kid has called in and this is like orchestrated behind the scenes without his knowing by the show's host and he's supposed to kind of like give some advice to this kid who's been having you know some like emotional issues and stuff and it's it's effectively creepy in that regard and so then we start to peel back the layers slowly of everything that happened with the initial disappearance and then discovery of these kids who uh, they're all like hanging from a tree dead when they were discovered and all their teeth are pulled out and you've seen the marketing stuff with this tooth monster it's like this like slothly looking creature almost like the sort of thing you would expect from uh oh boy i don't know um I don't know, Doug Jones or something, you know, just covering in teeth. And it's a very creepy design. I, I dug it. But really, more so than anything, it's it's discovering the mental instability of this protagonist and all of the secrets associated with, you know, what he knows about the death of all these kids, um, whatever connection his brother might have had, you know, as both victim and as someone in knowledge just like him of what transpired, you know, knowing stuff about this monster, but also the fact that, uh, and this is kind of overall impressions along the story, but also whatever connection this has with a story, uh, a children's show called Candle Cove that all of these kids back in the 80s remember watching and so not just our main dude who has come back to this small town but also a lot of kids who grew up who he was friends with back then one girl in particular who was like his first girlfriend who was going on to marry the guy who has become the sheriff of this small town and then there's a few others all of them remember candle cove this show which is like it's very like sesame streety like uh, anything henson company would have put together you know it's like you know 
fluffy, like, puppety-looking things, but there is something creepy and nefarious about this particular show, and, uh, you know, all of the different characters on it, and uh, especially the fact that the adults don't remember this show, but all the kids do. Did this actually broadcast? Was it some strange secret frequency that the kids were able to pick up on, and or they just happened to turn on the channel, right place, right time, and the static, you know, like, white noisy fuzz turned into something for them? Like, I don't know, and these are things that you explore and you find out over the course of peeling back the mystery of this, like, you know, where where did these kids go? You know, uh, our main guy's brother was one that was never discovered, and so that's a big plot point. Um, blame as to who actually was responsible, that's another plot point. So a lot of, a lot of skeletons in these proverbial closets are found, a lot of uh, just, just deep-rooted, repressive anger that's still there. It bubbles up with all of these kids who, you know, didn't get the answers even since becoming adults, and performances across the board are very good. There is nobody who, like, stands out as being very weak. Uh, the grown-up former love interest of our main guy, she is especially good. The fact that they still have a friendship, a kinship, a connection. Her husband, the sheriff dude, adequately douchey, you know? But uh, one of the main cruxes is the fact that, story-wise, the kid, uh, not not just the kid, um, various children in this town are starting to see Candle Cove broadcast again. And so this is where I make the it connection again, because, you know, Pennywise would return every 27 years, and so after all these years, Candle Cove is starting to pop up on kids' TVs again, and it's compelling them to do bad things. This younger girl attacks her brother at one particular point, and then there's kids who go on to do much more vicious and terrible things. And so you're trying to figure out was this show real? You know, where did it broadcast from if that was the case? And uh, yeah, just unravel that uh, that particular mystery, like pull back that proverbial curtain. And that's really what in the six episodes they do a terrific job with, both with the storytelling and with the acting. Uh, as far as effects go, I must admit it's not it's not insanely gory, but it's very it's very creepy, and uh, it it definitely pushes some unsettling buttons. Uh, especially with, anytime you have evil kids, you know, whether it's Children of the Corn or Village of the Damned, or whatever it may be, there is something significantly unsettling about that, at least for me. Uh, and this is definitely the sci-fi channel pushing their boundaries as they started to in the back half of the aughts and the back half of the 2010s, you know, with programming like this and with Blood Drive and with various others. They, they showed that very much like AMC, very much like, um, you know, a few of the other, not pay cable networks, and we're not talking HBO or Showtime or Cinemax or Stars, but, you know, some of these other cable channels were showing a willingness to be more profane, be more risque, more violent, and, and they don't shy away from that here either. I really dug Candle Cove. I dug the hell out of it, as a matter of fact, especially in the back half episodes after so much has been revealed. We understand the nature of it. There is a moment of sacrifice that is very well put together and then also creepy in other regards, too. So only six episodes, not a major dedication. I'd say if you're not feeling it by like at least two maybe three episodes in, if you're like a third of the way there, halfway there, and you're not feeling it, hey, that's a nice thing about... It's not as much of a dedication, so you can soldier forward, or you can just jump to the second season, No End House, I believe it's called. Cecil just got done watching that, and then there's also Butcher's Block, and then there's a fourth one, which eludes me, but we're hoping to do reviews of all of these, and uh, they're all based on creepypastas, and once again, they are all streaming on Shudder. So, uh, yeah, that's the end of the proceedings, everybody. I've been Jaime Fuego, and you can find moi on all social media sectors, separate from here at least, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, on YouTube, where I do have my own personal channel. If you have any it's called Enfuegotainment. Just search Enfuegotainment on YouTube and you can see non-spooktacular stuff from me. Comedy, art house, indie, drama, silliness, Star Wars coverage. I, I geek out on that channel. But like, share, subscribe here. Most importantly, that's why you're on the Horror Show channel. And make sure if you haven't hit the bell to do that. And if you do, make sure it's on all because we do a new episode every single day. And so... You want to get all of those notifications, right? The YouTube algorithm is strange where they do recommended videos and then, you know, if you hit all, you're going to get just, you know, that little reminder about every single new thing that we do from trailer reactions to film reviews, television like this, video game let's plays, unboxings. Uh, I do a weekly show called Hail to Stephen King. So there is tons of cool coverage here on The Horror Show. And lastly, if you want to be a patron and actually tell us what to review, um, your donation and support means a heck of a lot. And we have the 
link to the description in that here below. So, I've been Fuego, y'all have been Rad Status, and, uh, and uh, yeah, until next time, Fright fans, remember, stay scared.